in this video, I'm gonna take you through not only what CFDs are, but I'm actually gonna show you a real life example on the Trading 212 platform. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and if you're new here, I make videos about beginners investing, personal finance, getting out of debt and all that kind of stuff. So, CFDs. You've probably heard about them, you've probably seen them mentioned in videos and if you have Trading212, then you've probably seen that there is an option for CFDs on the platform. You would have also heard a lot of personal finance YouTubers probably cautioning you against this if you are a beginner investor. So today I just want to cover exactly what a CFD is and how it works and then show you in practice the way it looks using the platform. So a CFD stands for Contract for Difference. This is basically a contract between the individual and the brokerage firm, which could be trading 212. And at the end of the contract, the parties exchange the difference between the opening and closing prices of the financial instrument. This can be anything like shares, commodities, FX, or anything like that. The main point of CFDs is that they allow the individual investor to profit from price movements without actually owning the underlying asset. So this actually makes CFDs a form of derivatives. All that a derivative is, is a contract that derives its value from the performance of the underlying asset. Now, the key component that's usually considered the biggest draw to CFD trading is leverage. And that is the ability to trade using leverage. If you don't know what leverage is, leverage is the ability to use borrowed funds to increase an investor's trading position beyond what their cash balance actually is. However, you would still need to put down a percentage of the value of the underlying asset as like a deposit margin. Now this varies depending on the asset and the brokerage firm, but essentially in very simple terms, you will need to put down a deposit for the amount that you are borrowing. I'm gonna go into a worked example in a second and then I'm gonna show you how it works on the platform. But just a couple more points. Firstly, I don't personally like this and I would never encourage this, especially if you are a beginner, because it is essentially a form of gambling. You will never be able to predict what the market is going to do. Secondly, as Trading212 themselves point out, 76% of retail investors, i.e. you and me, lose money trading CFDs. Would you go into surgery knowing there's a 76% chance of you losing your life? If you are happy with the probability that more likely than not you will lose your money, then maybe you're willing to have a play and have a gamble, but it's really difficult to make money or any sort of financial gains from trading CFDs unless you are putting up big amounts because the prices swing very little on a daily basis. So in order to see substantial gains, you need to put up a significant amount of money. The flip side of that is if the stock drops, that money, you can lose it. Finally, I'm not a financial advisor. I've already said this. This is just me trying to show you how it works so you have a bit of an understanding because I know there are a lot of people who wonder about CFDs and are too scared to try it themselves, rightfully so. But yeah, just pointing out, I'm not a financial advisor. Okay, so let's quickly work through a worked example. Let's call it stock A. I think the value of stock A is going to go up and I want to day trade. Now, stock A has a share price of £100 a share. And say I wanted exposure to 100 shares, 100 times 100 is £10,000 i.e. a lot of money. Now using CFDs and leverage, assuming a margin of 5%, which is quite generous, I think most have margins of like 4%, but let's assume a deposit margin of 5%. The deposit would be 5% of the value of the total position. So if we are gaining exposure to 10,000 pounds, that will be 5% times 10,000 pounds, which is 500 pounds. So far more realistic for an investor. Now there are two possible outcomes here. Either I'm right or I'm wrong. So if I'm right and the price goes up, let's say it goes from hundred pounds to 150 pounds, i.e. a 50 pound increase. Yes, I know this is very exaggerated, but I'm trying to make a point here. So the increase of 50 pound a share times hundred shares, which is what you've purchased exposure to, is an increase of 5,000 pounds. So when you close your position, because you've made a profit, your margin is returned to you and you've made the £5,000 profit. So you can see there that a very small margin has enabled you to make a pretty significant profit. Sounds good, right? However, let's think about what happens if I'm wrong and the price drops by £50. 
So a £50 decrease for 100 shares is a £5,000 loss. So you might be thinking, and this is the mistake that a lot of people make, you might be thinking, well, I've only put up £500, so that's all I'm going to lose. Well, no, you are going to lose not only that £500 that you've put up as a deposit, you will have to find the remaining £4,500 to make up that £5,000 loss. So you are liable to the brokerage for the whole position's loss. Now clearly this example is oversimplified. Before I get loads of comments from experienced traders who tell me that this is super simplistic, firstly, the price is usually probably realistically not going to swing 50 in a day. I've done this just to make it easier to illustrate. Secondly, in reality, the firm will expect you to hold that margin constantly. So if you suddenly start losing loads of money, and you don't have enough money in your account, then the trading firm will essentially ask you to put up more of the deposit to cover your loss, or they would close the position for you. So again, let's look at an example here. Using the example that we've just looked at, if you only had 2000 pounds in your trading account and you'd put up that 500 deposit, the trading firm will continuously increase your margin, i.e. your blocked funds, as the price drops until they reach that 2000 pounds. And then your position will be automatically closed. So they're not gonna wait to see whether it goes back up or not they will just take that loss, you will be liable for it, and that's it. There is also things that come into play like overnight fees if you keep positions open overnight and stuff like that. But let's look at a worked example, okay? So I filmed this for you already to make sure that I cover the scenarios that I want to cover. So I'm gonna go into full screen, do a voiceover, and hopefully it'll give you a pretty decent idea of how CFDs work. Also a quick point, this video is going to demonstrate the going long scenario and generally everything I've really talked about is assuming that you are going long on a position. If you want me to make a video about going short, let me know and I'm happy to do that. Okay, so this is the homepage of the CFD platform. I'm going to go into search and look for UK stocks because the UK market was open at the time I was doing this and I ended up going for AstraZeneca, no particular reason, I just picked it because it was one of the first ones. So you can see the 2000 there at the top, that's the amount of shares you are buying. So I'm going to edit that and make it a thousand just so it's a smaller number. And basically you can see here, I've got 50,000 pounds and this is me using fake money of course. So I'm gonna go back in here and then press buy and you will see straight away the second I press it, it says you bought a thousand AstraZeneca at 81 pounds and you've got minus 272 straight away. So this is because of the spread. So if you look at the buy and sell figures at the top, they are different. So straight away, the second you've bought, because of the spread, you are losing money. This is how Trading212 two and, two and other firms make their cash. So you can see here, I've got 4,000 pounds of blocked funds. So this is the deposit margin we talked about earlier on. So. We can look here on that pie chart on our position, click into it and go down here and watch what's happening. Now, imagine I'm looking at this and thinking I want to sell for whatever reason, whether it's because it's down or whether it's because it's up. Look what happens when I press the sell button. Okay, it's on a thousand. I'm going to press sell and it says you sold. So you think you would have closed your position, but no. So now I've got two positions open. And this is the difference between the long and short positions. So by pressing the sell button, you're entering into a short position. As I said, I won't go into shorting in this video. I just wanted you to see that that's not the right thing to click. This is actually what you should see when you're selling. And I'll show you a proper example when we sell in a second. So I'm going to leave it for now and then come back later and see what's happened to my positions. Okay, so you can see that my original buy position is down by £1,100. So had I not intentionally opened this sell position, I would actually be £1,100 down. Okay, so quite an obvious thing here, but just in case, clearly both positions can't be making money because one is assuming that the price will go up and one is assuming that the price will go down. So what I want to do now is show you how to correctly close a position without accidentally opening a sell position in the meantime. 
So what you want to do is click on the position that you want to close. So I'm clicking on the cell position. So to offset it, I have to click on buy. So buy back these shares, enter the quantity and then click confirm close. So you can see here now I've only got the buy position open and my total loss showing for that now is a thousand pounds. And here you can see in closed positions and you can see I made 454 pounds on that sell position. So going back to the original buy position where I was assuming the price would go up, I just wanted to show you here on the graphs that at no point during the day since I purchased this position had the price gone above what I purchased it at. So it's not like if I had been waiting here the whole day um, or since I opened the position that I would have made money. It's constantly gone up and down, but it was always below that line that I purchased at. So just to round this up, I'm going to close this position. So because it was a buy, I'm clicking on sell here and entering the quantity. So remember, you have to go into this screen rather than clicking that sell button on the main page. That's it. All my positions are now closed. But I want to show you an example now of why you shouldn't be doing this if you are a beginner. So this was a screenshot of when I held some positions open overnight over the time when the Apple stock split was happening. So because this is a contract for difference, the stock splits actually aren't taken into account. So literally I lost all of my pretend money because I was still on the pretend account. You can see here account value is zero purely because that price dropped so much when the stock split happened that essentially I lost, you can see here, £49,667 all in one go. So clearly not a common occurrence, but again, just wanted to illustrate how easy it is to lose money if you don't actually know what you're doing. Some of you might point out that I could have entered a stop loss. A stop loss allows you to limit your loss by entering the amount you are willing to lose upfront. And once your loss reaches that level, your position will automatically close. If you want more details on this, then let me know and I can include it in the next video. So hopefully that's given you a little bit more insight into how CFDs work and you maybe won't be tempted to try them. Let me know if there's anything I haven't answered or if there's more videos you want to see around the topic and if there's anything specific that you want me to discuss in more detail. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.